and welcome to today's uh, video where we are going to uh, take a, a quick look at some examples of how you can use uh, design thinking techniques um, to uh, come up with um, you know uh, ideas for your research and, and to basically transform data and coded data into ideas uh, for papers and um, um, I'm I'm uh, sharing this with you as I am uh, trying to come up with a, with a new frame with a new idea for a, a high risk um, revised resubmit that I got from MIS Quarterly, um, and so I've been reading a lot and so, and so on and so forth. Okay, so before we uh, we look at that paper, I'm going to show you um, how I use this uh, for my um my dissertation but actually even before that um what are uh, design thinking techniques well you know uh design thinking is not like a super bs uh, sort of field where uh, a lot of people are doing things uh that are not uh, design thinking but design thinking basically is about using uh, practices that are used in uh, in de in design you know, by professional designers using those practices in in different fields and for different purposes other other than 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 designing things. Okay, so um, and I do think that actually we can think about uh, framing and ideas as as designs because for me uh, an idea for a paper is basically about building a model. And a model is a design object, okay? And um, uh, if you uh, go back to my video on, on Scapel, you remember that I talked a lot about the aesthetics of models and symmetry in models and, and beauty in models and how, uh, at least for me, uh, when I look at a model and it is beautiful and it is elegant, then um, it is also theoretically sound, okay? So, First, I, I want to show you uh, what I did during my, my PhD thesis, okay? Because I do have, I, I've completed the steps, right? So during my PhD thesis, you know, I, I use this, this design thinking practice, which consists of dropping ideas into post-its and then classifying and arranging post-its into a model, okay? So basically what I did is I, I opened PowerPoint and I, you know, I wrote all of the codes that I thought were interesting. And this was directly from Envivo. So I wrote all of these codes that I thought were interesting. Okay. And then um, on, on another screen, I um, copied the codes that I thought were key and starting to draw arrows among them. Okay. So I have several figures um, like this. Okay, where I basically began by copying some of these codes, the ones that I thought were more interesting, the ones that I thought were more important, and then I began to draw arrows uh, between them to, to build a model. As you see, this is not a super elegant model, arrows going in different directions, feedback loops and so on. Um, and so, but this is an iterative process where I design different versions of this model. And this is what I, I came up with. Eventually I came up with, with three models that were the three empirical chapters of my thesis. And um, two of them are now uh, published in MS Quarterly. Another one of them, unfortunately got a uh, third round reject from AMJ. But anyway, so, and as you see, basically what I have here are, is, is, is the model. This is sort of a, a nicer, model i wouldn't say it's the final model but it looks it looks nicer um and um it also has these sort of like constructs or meta categories or meta codes here uh, represented in, in these big squares okay so basically uh let me yeah so basically you know these are the three uh chapters of of my thesis okay and you see, I mean, like this is like super complex, but you know, I, I did use this these boxes to sort of like uh, split this and um, 
and um, and group them into distinct uh, parts and then I have these other subgroupings here so you know again the idea is that building a model is a gradual process that basically consists of creating this you know choosing listing your codes into in post-its okay establishing relationships among those post-its and then categorize um, post-its into groups which you know would be then then uh, variables okay so what i want to show you now is what i am doing for my current paper okay so in this current paper um, what i decided to do is instead of starting from instead of starting from data i want to like push the envelope a little bit and start from theory so what i did is at uh, first i uh, I, and we, I, I did show you that on video that I basically built, uh, I wrote a bunch of, 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 of reading notes. And then what I did is I went through these reading notes and I, uh, I, I colorized them. So you can see here are my reading notes. Okay. So, and I colorized the, the quotes and or notes that I thought were important. Okay. And then I picked up the notes that I colorized and i actually it's not there it's here i picked up the notes that i colorized um and basically summarized them in um in post-its and the way i did it is that you know i had each post-it has how the current literature sees things and how i see things so for example in this post-it the current literature talks about uh, an analytical culture and I want to talk about analytical practices okay uh, accessibility as a property of technology and I want to talk about it as an accomplishment of people okay so I basically built a matrix with with all of these notes and then the the second step is I divided these notes into three categories so one is the the contribution of the paper what is the theoretical novelty in the paper what is the so what of the paper things that are interesting that will be let's say secondary contributions or theories that i need to drop on for this contribution and then the hints or support so this is the giants whose shoulders i want to to sit on top when i am building my my contribution and uh, I now have finished this and basically what I'm doing now is I'm uh, going through this paper that has the, basically this model of information system success and what I decided to do is I'm going to add a new layer, a new mechanism to this model so um, so I'm using those post-its to, let me just uh, open this up a little bit. I'm using those post-its to go through this model and highlight, okay, what are the key concepts? What are the issues, the concepts that I want to discuss? What are the key relationships? And then what is in this model that, you know, I, I don't want to bother with because it's, you know, it's not something that, that I can speak to. Um, and at the end of this, basically what I'll do is I'll, I'll build my own model and establish connections between my own model and this model, because the, the outcome variable here is the same management decision quality. That's, that's what I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to, or if you want information system success. Okay. So that's how I use design thinking. Uh, how I'm using design thinking for this this uh, paper again for me design thinking is getting a bunch of ideas on post-its um, organizing those post-its into categories and then draw arrows um, between them okay uh, to build a model 
Okay, so, so this is what I'm doing. What the key lesson for me here about design thinking is really pay attention to the materials that you're using. Okay, for me, I needed the post-its for this paper. For other papers, I as I showed you, I just draw. Uh, but here, you know, I'm really trying to tackle a really complex literature papers that discuss a, a, a number of very different topics. Um, and, and so I really felt that I needed the physical material, the physical post-its to, you know, put on the wall and, and move around and, and so on. Really pay attention to that. If you are stuck for ideas, my suggestion would be, um, you know, try a different material artifact. Try to write in long form if you are not outlining. Try to outline, try to draw a graph, try, uh, try to use paper, uh, try to use Lego sometimes. You know, there's uh, this uh, research lab in, da uh, in, in Denmark that used to be run by my good friend Stefan Meisek, who's now in, in Australia. And uh, he, his lab uses Legos to help managers think through problems, you know, so really be mindful of medium and use medium as a means to, you know, really push your creative juices and really engage with the material. So I hope this shorter video today was, um, uh, was uh, useful and uh, I'll catch you guys tomorrow. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.